So this morning we're waking up in a Fatatutu Marae and we're going to check out a massive land slip. Today we're going to be trying something slightly bit different and tell you guys what happened to us yesterday after checking out the awesome stingrays of Dive Tatapuri. We went to the Fatatutu Marai to meet up with Marcus that is going to be our host for this afternoon, for the night and even for tomorrow which is going to be happening at the end of this episode. Marcus is a knowledgeable Maori tribe member. Now my mother's grandfather was one of Rautana's apostles and so my great 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 grandfather was one of the Kortu's first disciples. Okay, okay. He said both those two faiths have come together in our genealogy. Yeah. So the Pai is the front area of the Moran. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And so the Pai is the place where as we come through we're welcomed by um, our greeter and so the woman who does the karana. So she calls us all on to the Pasai, mm -hmm. into the Pai on the Marae. We can't enter until she gives us the nod. The women begin the ceremony and the women complete the ceremonies of life. From Marcus, we get a really in-depth explanation of what exactly a pofiri is and how it works. And a pofiri is a traditional welcoming ceremony for visitors like us stepping onto a marae for the first time. And a marae is a Maori meeting place. After meeting Marcus's family, we are then stepping around the back of the marae to check out a couple of the projects that Marcus is working on. One of them is this amazing traditional style par site. And a par site is a traditional fortified village that the Maori used to live in back in the day. Because there's not many remains of par sites around New Zealand, you only really get to see sort of man-made terraces in the side of hills where par sites used to be situated. Marcus is trying to recreate what par sites used to look like so that visitors like us can understand and learn more about the Maori culture. The par site is made up of various places to sleep, there's places to store food, even a little campfire area where Marcus can tell stories, and we even see a watchtower as well where we can look for oncoming enemies. After Robin has approved the sleeping area and the watchtower as well, Marcus tells us that the par site isn't quite finished yet and there are a few jobs on the par site to do that we can help him with, so we get out the power tools and start getting to work. I don't want to be too bitchy, but we don't start getting to work. I start getting to work and Laura is really busy filming and taking pictures. But nonetheless, it's a really awesome experience to be able to work on the Maori Pass site. I mean, after all, we are foreigner right here in this country and being able to leave something behind is such a good feeling. So we are getting on to a few different jobs and the first thing that we're doing is to tie on some massive pole fenua, which are those really big carved poles right at the entrance of the par site. This helps welcome visitors onto the area and also tell a part of the history of the local tribe. It's a very important part of the Maori culture. But because Marcus does this par site mostly to show visitors more about the Maori culture, we are actually tying those pofenua all around the perimeters, giving it a really cool, eerie feeling with a lot of ancestral histories. But then we are moving on to what is probably the hardest job I've ever done in New Zealand. I have a massive trunk of manuka tree, which is the second hardest wood in New Zealand to cut in order to create a sitting area. This is how Maori used to cut wood with really not sharp tool at all and a lot of patience. And man, you need a lot of patience. I am not joking. It oh takes God, me so, happen. so long to finally cut that massive trunk in half. I can literally <laughs> say that I've left blood, sweat and tears into this place. Now we, or at least Robin, can enjoy a well-deserved rest watching the sunset over the par site. After that we gather around the campfire, share a few campfire stories and learn about each other's cultures. And today has been an awesome way to learn about the Maori culture. But this is just a recap of what we did yesterday. We're now going to be moving on to what we're actually doing today, which is going to visit the Tarndale Slip. So we're about to leave the Fatatutu Marae and we are about to head to some absolutely stunning areas of Maori significance. Um, that's basically what we know and Marcus refused to tell us more. 
so we're gonna have to just remain in complete secrecy. Yes, Marcus is taking us on a little bit of a secret road trip where at first the road is just going through farmland. In the distance we can see that there's forestry and pine forest. And once we get onto a pretty gnarly gravel road, Marcus is telling us that this road actually used to be the main route through the region about 30 years ago. However, we quickly learn why this is no longer a main road anymore. The road quickly stops with a big sign saying road closed, so we have to walk from here. And we end up in this massive valley on top of a ridge with two huge landslips on either side. This landslip offers absolutely amazing views of the surrounding. It's another one of those stunning, beautiful New Zealand landscape that you can't stop taking pictures of. However, it's a stark reminder of the human impact on the environment. Because of the intense forestry in the area, all of the native forest has been replaced by pine trees. And the pine trees have much more shallower roots than what the New Zealand native forest usually has. And therefore, as soon as there was a little bit of an earthquake, the roots were not capable of keeping the land together. And the landslip happened, scarring this landscape forever. In fact, this landscape is so gigantic that this is the second largest landslip in the Southern Hemisphere. It can be seen from space, it's that big. But we can't stop from exploring it. We are actually attempting to cross the whole area despite the fact that it's a little bit dangerous Now, I wouldn't recommend it to most people. But because Marcus has came here really often, he knows where we can stand and where we can actually has to make our way across this massive ditch. Despite this stark reminder of the human impact on the environment, New Zealand is still one of the countries that put the most effort on conservation. And there is a lot of different effort to actually scale down forestry in favor of native forest. But this marks the end of our time with Marcus. It's stoked with heaps of amazing Maori culture souvenirs in our head that we are heading on the beautiful Pacific Coast Highway. It's such a picturesque highway that we actually stop along the way about 20 times as we are making our way toward Tokamaru Bay and the beautiful backpackers called Stranded in Paradise, which is going to be our base for the next few days. So if you ever go to this pass site and you sit on a log, just think, this could be the log that Robin cut with his hands in a machete. So well done, Robin. That was a little shit. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh.